All right. Hello and welcome to the show. We are Georgia's showcase baseball coverage of Georgia, Florida, amateur baseball. I am Kevin Perkins. I am your host. I'm here with Ben House, who is the owner operator of both Georgia showcase baseball and this particular podcast. I am here with Jordan and I'm sorry, John Holland, John Holland. I apologize. I was trying to remember a whole lot of stuff at the same time. That was, we are going to talk about how travel baseball teams working together can help one another in bettering the opportunities for these youngsters you guys are trying to help. And then we're going to also talk a little bit, John, when we talked earlier, you said some really neat things about the way to develop and your philosophies on development and the way you kind of got some kids into colleges and things like that. I want to try to go through that and I want to do all of that with Jordan, John and Ben after the break first we do have a sponsor and our sponsor is the dixon firm when a cheap lawyer won't do that's dixonfirm.com and they're going to be in a commercial later in the show thank you guys for sponsoring us and we'll talk about all of this stuff after the break this is the georgia florida baseball show brought to you by coach ben house with kevin perkins from surrounded by sports Now, John, first, just tell us about your organization a little bit, if you don't mind, sir. Okay. Uh, So we are ATL Metro RBI, Inc. Um, We um, basically started the format uh, that people understand of the RBI program in Atlanta. Uh, RBI, which is reviving baseball in the inner city, was a major league baseball uh, project. And it was it was targeted after inner city ball players to help you get them acclimated to the game of baseball. Uh, It was a rec league uh, structure. And when I took it over, I decided that I could make it more competitive and target some of the more competitive African-American kids if we ran it during the week and then allowed them to go play travel ball on the weekend. By doing so, over the eight year period, uh, we made it one of the more dominant RBI programs in the nation. And by doing so, uh, we've had a lot of kids over 25 that came out of that program that have been drafted uh, and uh, six of them playing in the major leagues. But also by doing so, uh, it put a target kind of on our back because Major League Baseball slash Atlanta Braves decided that um, they needed to take the program over and take it to greater heights. they took the program over and then took my format and basically does, they do the same thing. The only thing they changed was uh, the way they uh, do the pitch count, the innings and uh, the competitive uh, championship at the end. That being said, ATL Metro RBI uh, stayed in the program and supported them for a couple of years. But now uh, we have ATL Metro MLSA. So, which is the Metro leadership sports Academy. We're taking the concept that we always had and we're streamlining it into the South DeKalb, uh, South Atlanta uh, area uh, where we can still continue to develop kids, play in com- competitive um, tournaments and and try to keep everything relegated to our side of town where we can keep the kids. I heard Ben speak of some of the challenges that he deals with in his program and we deal with some of the same challenges. Now, our kids are 13 and older, and uh, he starts a lot younger. So many of our kids have played in his program. Hence, we both take credit for them getting drafted. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's a, it takes a village to raise a child anyway. So we, we feel good about what Ben is doing and has been doing. And, um, you know, my son, who's on the call right now, Jordan, uh, I can say honestly that I believe his major league opportunities enhanced by his relationship with Ben House. Ben got behind him and did a lot of uh, behind the scenes effort to get him opportunities that I couldn't doors that I couldn't open. And obviously right. his had to open the eyes of the scouts, but somebody had to talk to him that they trusted. And it made me realize that uh, the scouting process is more about a bird dog scout, so to speak, a Ben House, a now a John Hollins, 
that a scout trusts than it is about them being able to see a kid play eight times because it's hard for them to see kids play eight times. So they trust your judgment and then they decide whether that's something they're going to follow. And so uh, that being said, then in showcase baseball has been instrumental in not only helping the kids that he serves, but also helping the kids that I serve because he had the first indoor cage uh, that allowed us to go hit uh, at a, a at a, a substantial discount, may I add, to make it possible for us to be able to do it. We had like 500 kids in there being like, come on, John, man, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, but, I believe you said to me before that most places wouldn't have even allowed you to use their facility. They won't, and not unless because they want my kids. They want some of my kids. And so when my kids deny them, then they won't let us use their facility because they feel like if they do that, that will encourage the families to eventually come to them because we don't have the that they have. So they try to, I even had one and I, I will say nameless. He's a top scout in the area and he has a program. And he said, John, I got a great idea. And I asked, what was that? He said, because I let a couple of my kids go play with him because we weren't in the WWBA or we weren't in certain big tournaments. He said, if you give me your top kids, I can send you some kids to come play with you and those kids can come play with me. And I said, well, that doesn't work. And and he <laughs> said, well, why is that? And I said, because you're taking the best kids I have so you can win. Even though right. winning is my number one objective, right. the kids around them, feel less than when you bring other kids in there who haven't practiced, who haven't been a part of it, and then you play them over them because I can't bring your kids to our tournaments and not play them, and they may not be as good as some of our kids, but because we're doing a swap, then I have to honor that swap, so I can't see myself doing that. So those are the challenges that we deal with in dealing with some of these programs because they make a comfortable living off of travel baseball. Right. Some of as much as a million dollars a year based on the amount of teams and the and, and the business model that they work out of. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but many of them that I've talked to, when they charge four thousand dollars, the business model is really you get two thousand dollars worth of baseball and the owner gets two thousand dollars. I personally am a nonprofit. So as you understand how nonprofit is structured, mm-hmm. I have a my nine ninety is auditable by anybody who wants to look at it. I have to make sure that whatever I start with, I end with and anything that's extra, I have to put back into the program in order to contain and continue my 990 to be a, a uh, auditable 990. I have to stay around 25% administrative fee, no more than 35%. Otherwise I fall out of the lines that the federal guidelines ask for you to do and can lose my 990. So that being said, we basically put everything back into the program. I've continued to work, uh, in my nine to five, so I can be able to do that. I have to pay my coaches understanding that I'm competing against people that can pay them 10,000. I don't pay that much, but they still have jobs and for what they do make and be able to, it, it's worth it to them to stay loyal. I'm trying right. to build a program where we can get it a little bit better. Last but not least, so I can let you jump in. Our program basically is about uplifting young men through the sport of baseball and giving them an opportunity to go to college uh, or advance academically uh, in the field that they want to through the sport of baseball. We've been successful in helping over 300 kids go on to college. Um, We probably have one of the highest um, uh, acceptance programs in the city, counting the top dogs, because we spent countless hours on the phone with Shoop at FAMU, uh, Drew at Alabama State, uh, uh, Holloway at Xavier. I can go on and on where I talk to these coaches and I send film and then I send them to the school for their camps uh, with discounts before they ever show up, understanding that we're not coming to pay your assistant coaches. We're coming to get an opportunity and I understand you need to see them. I've given you film. Let me know what you need. We're not going to send 20 kids over there. You know, that's just not how it works. And so they've come to respect what we do and how we do it. And so I have them call me and say, hey, we're serious. We need these kids in these areas. And that's what we do. We help promote them in those areas. And so we've been fortunate. And I know I toot my hat, but we've had an average of 10 kids sign a year over the last four years. And um, that's, uh, that's a high number for a program that many people have never heard of or can't name. 
And so it's because we're not focused on our name over the years. We've been focused on the kids. Uh, you know, we've now um, moved into the realm of, of more development uh, and working with um, younger kids. Uh, we're doing so by the fact that uh, we will be investing into a facility where we will have a place for them to come. Um, you know, I'll be knocking on Ben's door to figure out how he kept the doors open because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a high risk, but I think it's a great reward where we have a place for them to, to get better, to grow the game, and then also grow academically. As I shared with you earlier, we focus on, um, you know, the mind, uh, the metrics, or not necessarily in that order, but the mind, the metrics, uh, and, and the uh, academics, uh, and then baseball. So, you know, it's a four-pillar kind of approach because we understand that baseball is really plan B. Uh, many programs call it plan A and then make sure academics is plan B. Yeah, I just wanted to say on that same point, I think it's uh, important that we mention that this year we have an average GPA of 3.4. So it's very good. <clears throat> right. Now, you, you had said earlier, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break real quick. Again, I want to uh, thank our sponsors, the Dixon Firm. When a cheap, when a cheap lawyer won't do, the Dixon Firm. That'd be DixonFirm.com, D-I-X-O-N-F-I-R-M.com. Okay. Now we were talking about the mental aspects of baseball, but you had said earlier that you were wanting kids to focus on mathematics and other things. John, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So. Um... When, when we do academic training, we don't necessarily do uh, anything that involves school. So one thing we don't want them to do is leave uh, the school environment and come to our environment and think they're in class again, because I've been uh, involved in, in uh, modules for mentoring uh, for quite some time. I don't know if you ever heard of the 100 Black Men of America. Yes, sir. Uh, but I am the past president of this area. And uh, we've done a great job with helping kids understand when we bring them in there. We do Toastmaster, which I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but speaking in public, uh, understanding uh, how to have a speech prepared, um, what to focus on when looking into a crowd, things of that nature to help them deal with public speaking uh, more often, speaking out in class, asking questions. So we work on things of that nature. We work on technology. Uh, building their own website, uh, understanding how to build their website, things of that nature. Uh, so it's important they understand the technology that we're dealing with, AI, and how that operates. So we're trying to get them more acclimated to things that are going to help them in the workforce and in, in the um, recruitment area, not only through baseball, but recruitment and jobs. Uh, so knowing how to sell themselves. Uh, and so we want to work on continue doing that with our baseball program. Right. Uh, with kids. So, uh, you know, looking to partner with Microsoft and Apple uh, because of my relationships to see if we can also leverage those opportunities where they provide some of the technology necessary for them to come in and, and operate on. And lastly, we have a software technology company that offers ninth graders and 10th graders because you have to go through two to three years of this program. But if they are willing to do a tutorial uh, three nights a week, uh, for an hour a week, and they offer, they give them the laptop, train them up. Uh, when they graduate from high school, they offer them a $75,000 a year uh, apprentice job uh, in software development. And so Huge. you still have kind of like architectural, you got to go through a uh, maturation period or incubator period where you're doing it before you can actually become a full-fledged uh, software developer who basically starts at around 200000 a year. So uh, a hedge fund up in New York has uh, allowed the dollars where these people can study online. So they come in the facility train and they can uh, actually flip out the laptop and do those things and help prepare them. Because as, as you know, and I know, and it took us time to realize it, but college is not for everybody. And 
even though uh, I promote college because academics is for everybody. Education mm -hmm. is, but college is not for everybody. So right. we continue on. I'd like to look at some of the blue collar opportunities and heating and air, plumbing. Uh, Let's transition over to Jordan for a second, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Jordan, talk about who, like what you're doing now and how you got there, if you don't mind, and how these two wonderful uh -oh. gentlemen helped you get there. Yeah, uh, well, my name is Jordan Hollins. I'm uh, John's son. Um, I played in the program as well as played under Coach Ben. Um, he helped me, speaking on Coach Ben, um, like my dad said, a lot to get my name out there to pro scouts and, you know, getting the circuit. Obviously, Coach played in the league, so he had a lot of connections. And so <laughs> through him, I got an uh, opportunity uh, to get seen and get a little bit more recognition. And um, then after high school, I went to Chipola College, where I was uh, fortunate enough to win two national championships there, um, and then went on to Texas Southern, and then went on to Ottawa University out in Arizona. And, uh, you know, I try to preach to the kids that baseball and school can take you a lot of places. And so it's always important to be be where you are right then, be where your feet are at, because you never know where your path is going to go. So it's important you dominate where you're at in that situation. So I tried to really uh, embrace that. Um, ended up getting picked up by uh, a professional team um, and then tore my labrum in spring training. Mm. So it was uh, a full, full moment for me where, you know, I came back home, I was rehabbing, and I don't know if anybody's told you about a labrum uh, surgery and rehab process, but they say it's one of the longest ones. Um, so it took me about eight to nine months to really get back to form. Um, played a little bit, but after I came back home and started working with my dad and helping out the kids and um, basically just running all the uh, director of uh, baseball operations stuff, I fell in love with the the process of what we were doing. I fell in love with seeing the kids that I saw come into the organization at 13, 14 years old and one, not be ball players yet, you know, quote unquote ball players. And two, not necessarily know, uh, not necessarily um, know what their purpose was in baseball yet. You know, they kind of just thought that, just as most kids do, unless you're really talented at a young age, you just kind of think you're playing, you know, and right. uh, game itself is so difficult that once you fail so many times, the people who are just playing the game without really learning the lessons behind the game and learning how you really can uh, grow yourself mentally in the game, those kids usually leave relatively soon. So it was a uh, point for me to make sure I emphasize <clears throat> You know, you don't have to be the best baseball player in the world to play at a college level. You mm -hmm. don't have to be the best baseball player in the world to play at the professional level. But you do have to have a hunger and a drive to want to get out there and get better every day and be with your friends every day. And because baseball is a grinding, grueling sport. So if you're just out there going through the motions, it's going to eat you apart. So I it, tried to go ahead. OK, go ahead. isn't the purpose of playing baseball in a lot of ways? And Ben, you can jump in here. It's in a lot of ways, the purpose of playing baseball is to learn how to pick yourself up. Yes. It, it's learning how to grind, you know? Um, I mean, Ben was better than most, so he didn't have to grind as hard as some of us. <laughs> no, I, I worked. I had to work. I yeah, know. I, I, yeah, I had to work. So, yeah, baseball is one of those things, one of those games where, you know, you you, you have to continue to get better. It's, it's a repetitive game. It's not one of those games – where you can you can sit out three months, um, like you know maybe football or, or basketball, and then go and, and want to pick the baseball up again or, or the bat up again. It's one of those sports that you have to re repeat over and over and over, even when you're playing another sport. If you're playing basketball, if you're playing football, you still you still have to uh, uh, dive into baseball. You still have to keep that ball in your hand. You still have to keep that bat in your hand. You still have to keep a glove in your hand just to work on your skills. Right. Yep. That's why that's why it's amazing to me. I think that the focus of what you're doing, John, and what you're now beginning to do, Jordan, first of all, when you see a kid's light come on and he realizes he learned something new, right? Or he fails and then he succeeds. You can't replace that feeling you get when you help that happen. No. Well, Kevin, let me let me let me um uh 
when I, when I first started coaching um, uh, uh, middle school baseball here in Atlanta, um, I coached against John. And John, John taught me how to coach kids that didn't have the talent, um, so to speak. Right. He, he taught me how to be patient. He taught me how to develop. Um, and I got involved with John uh, in his organization to, to actually learn how to coach, how to, how, to, how to be persistent at what I wanted to do and have to, how I wanted that drive to go, that vision. And, and I saw that in John, and, and that's, that's what kind of sparked me in, into wanting to start my own organization, just, just watching him develop kids that didn't have necessarily the top talent, but he took those kids and he worked with them and he got them to where they are now. So he was very instrumental to me to where I am now today. Wow. What well, kid that Major League Baseball asked me why I had so many white kids on my inner city program. And I said, believe it or not, one of my white kids, uh, two of my white kids are the poorest kids I have. I said, I don't right. look at when I look at opportunity and the lack of. I look right. at giving somebody an opportunity. Uh, I had a kid, uh, his mom committed suicide in front of him when he was 11. His dad was doing 14 years for drug. I'm still in that kid's life. He's been in and out of jail. He's now clean. He's mm -hmm. playing on a big team, lefty throwing up in Tennessee, sending me pictures. He got two babies, and he thanks me profusely for saving his life because he didn't right. think life was worth living because of what he experienced as a kid. But right. that's what we do when you're trying to use baseball as an opportunity to better people's lives. The 100%. game is just a part of it. It's just a right. part of it. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to wrap on that. That's a wonderful story. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much, Jordan. Ben, thank you, folks. Ben, how do they get in touch with you? Um, my direct contact number is 678-469-5994. Uh, uh, my IG is uh, showcase underscore baseball. GA and my email address is showcasebaseball.georgia at gmail.com. Georgia spelled out. All right. And your uh, website, real quick, jo uh, John. Our, our website uh, is. Uh, go ahead, George. www.atlmetrorbi.com.org.org. And the email for that is atlmetromlsa at gmail.com. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much.